Yeah, we want to talk about uh, wisdom this morning. And it's really kind of a continuation of last week. We talked about uh, the, the things and, and the, the racism and the racial strife and, and just the craziness that's enveloped uh, the world aside from that. And we spoke about that, that really our topic and the topic that we aren't going to deviate from is on earth as it is in heaven. And, and so today, uh, you know, wisdom is just such a, a key part of that that I didn't want to like dribble in a little bit from last week. I actually wanted to press in and spend a whole Sunday uh, talking about it. But I want to start by telling a, a story. And I'm, I'm looking out and trying to judge everybody's ages. So some of you will relate to this story very well. I think if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever, like, I think you're going to relate to this story. And do you remember the good old days when uh, you get in the car, the whole family would climb in the car, and you were going to be going on a trip, and you could be going to some place that dad's never been before, right? And he'd hop in the car, you'd hop in the car. And most of the time, it was not the type of place that we really wanted to go as kids, but we had to go. Dad starts driving. He's never been there. He had a few directions scratched down. But inevitably, what happens? Dad gets lost, and uh, the tension starts rising uh, in the car, and, and everybody's kind of waiting for it. And then mom, very, very gently, starts reading, reaching over. And it used to be they called it the map compartment. Now I guess it's what, a glove box or utility box, whatever it is. But it used to be like a map box because you actually had to have maps in your car. So mom would very bravely kind of just, and you could hear the button click, and then you're always waiting to see, like, oh, what's dad going to say? What, what, what's dad going to do? You know, and, and dad would see, like, no, 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 I got it. Uh, just a couple more turns. I think I missed it back there. And you're like, dad, like, why do we have to go through this every single time we get in the car? Just let her open the map and look at it and tell us where we're at. Well, dad drives around for another 15 minutes, lost as could be. The, the tension is rising in the car. And even the map at that point doesn't do much good because dad's gotten so far off. And then there's a moment coming. You guys know what that moment is? What's mom going to say? Yeah. Dear, why don't we stop and ask for directions? Right? And you can feel the tension and you can see dad like the wheels <laughs> kind of turning. And dad takes a couple of deep breaths and he humbles up and finally the next gas station or the next passerby, you stop and he asks for directions and you get there and then when we get there, even though there's been a ton of tension and all of that and Dad just about lost it. He's got to get resaved in the process. You put on big smiles and you walk in. Anybody relate to that? I mean, this is before GPSs and this is before uh, AAA trip ticks and, and smartphones and all of that. But the point is, what is the, the point here? The, the point is, is that guidance to get from here to there is, is acquired by through surrender and humility. And we are in an age where it's almost impossible to get to the bottom of something so that we have something that we can stand on and we can lay forward, we can lay a track so that we can move forward in, in life. And in a bit ago, I don't know about you, when I first started the, the COVID thing first hit and we had all that flexibility, I just had this big long list. I always thought I was going to get so caught up and so far ahead of everything that I had to do. And actually, I ended up getting further and further behind. The flexibility of it all just didn't work. And I thought, you know what, I have to simplify my devotion. And I believe by the, the spirit I was driven to uh, Proverbs. And actually, for the last several weeks, I have been pouring myself into Proverbs and pouring them uh, into me. And I want to tell you that in the age of uh, moving targets and in the age of endless pivots, the only way forward and the only wisdom that we need and is going to uh, get us to where we need to go 
is wisdom of God. Right? Nothing but moving targets and endless pivots. But I want to tell you that there is a way forward. And in wisdom, sometimes we think of wisdom, well, what is it? It's, it's, it's much more than having a high IQ. It's, what, it's much more than gaining data or winning uh, trivial pursuits, something like that. Wisdom is actually knowing what to do with what you know. So it's not like just what you know, but it's knowing what to do with what you know. It involves insight and foresight, and insight is the ability to read the lines. Uh, Sight is the ability to read the lines. Insight is the ability to read between the lines. Foresight is seeing like exactly what's in front of us here and now, but foresight actually sees, well, what happens as this thing plays out What's it going to look like? So insight and foresight. This is, is, is wisdom. And God's wisdom is distinguished from man's wisdom, or we call it worldly wisdom, because it is marked with purity. It is marked with peace. It is marked with strength. It is marked with protection. It is marked with clarity. It is marked with health. It is marked with hope. It is marked with safety, and it is marked with joy. You will find that in the 31 chapters of Proverbs. And as your pastor, I want to invite you with everything I have, even though it costs you everything to get wisdom. That You know, what is the wisest thing that you can do? Proverbs 4, 7, getting wisdom is the wisest thing that you can do. If you want to be wise, you have to gain wisdom. And we're going to be in a couple of chapters. We're going to be in James uh, 1. So if you want to turn there, if you've got your Bibles and devices, you can turn there. Uh, If, yeah, and then uh, later we'll be in Proverbs uh, 2. But let's start off in James chapter 1. I'll read verse 2. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Ah, yeah. So I know I just lost half of you. (laughs) But I want you to hang in there. I want you to to come back in, right? In verse 3, it says this, For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. Your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And here is the the great truth that we find in, in God's wisdom, is that many times the greatest seasons that we have of spiritual growth aren't found in the seasons of the mountaintops. They are found in the seasons of the valley. Verse 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. You might circle that. We talk about in our giving declarations the notion and the truth that God is a generous God. It should shape the way that we uh, give, and it should shape the way that we seek wisdom. And it says this, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. So the, the first step, in obtaining wisdom is to uh, be willing to humble up. And just like uh, dad, we have to admit that there's an inside, there's a path, there's a, a way forward that is greater than what we have in ourselves. And I want to tell you, just like dad, that is a tremendous challenge to you and I. It requires us to, to be dependent. It is, it is a very, very vulnerable spot to be in. To say, I depend. To say, I don't know everything that I need to know. But the amazing thing, the thing that James wants you and I to know this morning is that he is not going to shame us or get on us because we came to that place where we humbled up and admitted we didn't know everything and we needed help. Sometimes in the car with dad. Mom would finally, we'd stop for directions and what would mom say? 
I, I told you, like we, we, we should have done that. I want to tell you, dad, or, our dad, our spiritual dad, heavenly dad, he doesn't do that. He doesn't rebuke us. He doesn't make us feel silly for saying, God, we need your help. We need guidance. We need some firm direction in this thing. He wants us to come and ask for wisdom. He wants us to experience all the blessings of wisdom. And he wants us to come back for more and more and more and more of wisdom. And I want to tell you, as you start and if you will seek out wisdom, you will enter into a shame-free zone. It's a beautiful and wonderful way of gaining knowledge and learning and figuring out the way forward in the crazy times that we're living in. Let's jump to Proverbs for a bit. Then we're going to go back to, to James. So Proverbs 2.1. We're going to find some great. If you say like, well, well, how do I acquire wisdom? We just saw. Well, the first thing we have to do is humble up. And we have to ask, but there's a, there's a few more steps. There's some great uh, insight that we can gain here. So Proverbs 2.1 says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. You might circle that word treasure. Tune your ears to wisdom. You can circle the word tune. And concentrate on understanding. Focus. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure, just like Miss Nicole did earlier. And then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and not fear the Lord in some sort of you're, that you're afraid and, and, and you feel uh, guilty and you're terrified, not that kind of way, but that you understand how awesome he is and how much smarter he is and how revered and holy he is. So it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. So here in there, I want to highlight Four things that we can take away, uh, keys to moving in wisdom in our life. And the first is to treasure wisdom, to treasure wisdom. I want to tell you that fools, when God offers them wisdom, they act as if God is giving them a stick or a piece of dirt or a rock. And I want to say that in this day and age and always, that nothing is more valuable than wisdom itself, more valuable than all the gems and, and precious metals. And I want to say that though it costs you everything, get wisdom. You will only obtain wisdom by treasuring it. You see, obtaining wisdom isn't really such uh, an exercise of intellect as it is an exercise of the heart. Seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. Treasure it. Treasure it. And the second thing is tune in. And, and some of you know, uh, you know, we, we, we love our worship here and, and it is pretty awesome. It was actually really awesome today. Uh, we thank you guys for your hard work and we thank you that you guys tune Actually, could you imagine if everybody just kind of happenstance, just kind of twisted their tuning knobs and then just let it rip like uh, the very best of us worshipers like Louis and Sarah, like I, I know these guys are going to worship. It wouldn't matter uh, what's in tune, what's out of tune, if there's instruments or not. But for me, I'm kind of like, Ugh, oh, I don't know. But I want to tell you that these instruments are tuned to a specific truth. They're tuned to a, a harmonic truth. They're tuned like A is tuned to four, what they call 440 tuning. And that is that this string will vibrate exactly 440 times per second. You don't go 445. You're, you, I mean, some do. Uh, you could go 435. But the goal is you want 440. We have instruments. And sometimes as you're trying to tune, especially an acoustic instrument, if there's a lot of stage noise or things happening, what do you have to do if you want a good and accurate tune? You got to leave the room. You got to go get by yourself. You got to go there and you've got to just put aside all of the noise and all the other instruments and all the other uh, chaos and things that can be going on and you have to get alone so that you can tune in. Luke 5, 16 says, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. 
he often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. And what was Jesus doing? He is tuning his ear to God's voice, to God's wisdom. The third thing that we have to do is we have to track it down. We have to seek it out. I'm so glad we had the treasure chest here this morning. It's like you have to look for it like you're looking for hidden treasure. I don't want to tell you, the odds are that you are not sitting on X marks the spot. Just, just move in that assumption whenever you're trying to acquire uh, wisdom that you, it is not like you're just sitting on the spot right there. It requires that you might have to walk around. You might have to get on a plane. You get in a ship. You got to be looking for clues. It might even include that you have to dig into the uh, a deep, dig into the dirt a little bit to pull it up. But there you will find it. I want to tell you, acquiring wisdom, it is a pursuit the next thing is you need to tear up. It says cry out. Cry out for wisdom. It's, this is, the word is really to call out, to, to summons wisdom, to summons the Lord, to call it out out loud. This isn't something, this isn't a response of our, our inner self that, that you can just hold under your breath. I mean, it has to come out. Wisdom is not laid hold of by casual prayer. Wisdom is not laid hold of by casual prayer. It is by a fervent crying out and seeking and responding to the Lord. Verses eight and nine. It says, he guards the path of the just and protects those who are faithful to him. This is a good, great part of, of, of wisdom. And then you will understand what is right, just, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. And if we're honest, don't we really want to know like how to navigate what's uh, going on? I want to tell you that the Lord's wisdom is an established path. It has been since the very beginning of, of time and before that, that, the war, the, that, that God's wisdom is an established path. And the more uncertain the times are, the more that there's endless pivots, the more time, like there's moving targets in all of this and deception, the more we need an established path. And I believe as a church, it's, it's always been true, but we are desperate for an established path, but it is found in God's wisdom. Verse 10 says this, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Do you guys hear that? I've read this verse probably a hundred or a hundred, I don't know, a hundred plus times in my life. And finally, for the first time, I, I, I saw it. And it's this, is that as, as we pursue wisdom, at some point, at some point, it, 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 it ends up pursuing us in return. It fills us with joy. It enters our heart. Isn't that awesome? We pursue, we pursue wisdom. And then at some point in return, it pursues us. Wisdom is, is awesome. We find clarity in this. Verse 11, wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. Wise choices will watch over. Do you see that? That picture, that picture that is being painted for us, that our wise choices protect us for today, and they also offer us an ongoing protection as well. The, the peace that we walk in today, or the lack of peace that we are walking in today, is in direct correlation to the choices we made yesterday. What we're walking in today is in direct correlation to the decisions that we made yesterday. I want to talk to moms and dads. Wisdom is like a, a greenhouse for your family. A, a greenhouse uh, allows all the awesome and good things that you want to see grow in, in your home. Whether you have uh, kids or not, you want to establish this greenhouse from the very, very beginning. And I want to tell you, if you will establish it 
in your home and the things that you want to see grow in your kids, that regardless of what is happening out there, you will always experience growth. It'll be protected. It'll have everything it needs to nurture and to grow. It's a greenhouse for our our family's wisdom. Verse 12 says, Wisdom will save you from evil people and from those whose words are twisted. I want to tell you, are we living in a day of twisted words? You cannot, there's, there's, there's probably not a source anymore that you, can, that you can trust. Even the ones that were the spin-free zones, now all of a sudden everything is just drenched in agenda and in spin. And here it says that wisdom will protect us from deception, from twisted words. It helps us to read between the lines. It helps us to read underneath uh, the surface. And we have to put boundaries in our lives for people and for sources that are uh, muddying up our spiritual waters. Seriously, maybe when you get home, you need to look at who you're following on Instagram. Don't hang out. And I mean hanging out by hanging out on Instagram. Don't hang out with people that are that are muddying up the waters that wisdom has brought you clarity in. So, have I got, have I, am I okay with uh, wisdom and acquiring wisdom and how, uh, how that we do it? And then the next question I had, like when I was looking at it, it was like, well, how do I know when it's God's wisdom? And how do I know when it's man's wisdom or the world's wisdom? Well, James is like amazing. Chapter three in this. I'll read first 15 through 17. It says, <clears throat> uh, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. I love it when the Bible is so clear. Isn't that great? The Bible's amazing. Such things are earthly. Okay, I kind of saw that. Unspiritual, okay. And demonic. Whoa. This is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every and evil of every kind. Anarchy and violence. And I want to tell you, in this place, this is where darkness sets the agenda of the soul. But the wisdom from above, the wisdom of heaven, maybe your translations have, is first of all, pure. It's the only kind of wisdom that is is pure. It's the only kind of wisdom that isn't with some other sort of agenda other than the agenda of heaven, the agenda of God. It is first of all, pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others, it is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism, right? It has no bias, no prejudice, and is always sincere. And I want to ask you, church, if we walked around in the wisdom of God, would there be any oppression? Would there be any trafficking? Would there be any racism if we moved in the wisdom of God? This is like a checklist. I want to tell you that we have to test all things. And this is the way we do it. We do it against this list right here. Does it look like this? And if it doesn't, I want to tell you that it's not God's wisdom. God's wisdom is so glorious. And the path that it sets before us is so glorious. I want to tell you, if you want to immerse your path in God's glory, then you immerse your path in the wisdom of God. If you want to immerse your path in the glory of God, immerse your path in the wisdom of God. All right. And there's a final measure so that we can tell as we're testing all these things, this, this, this is the wisdom of God. There's finally a great opportunity and a great model for us to be able to tell if a wisdom is from above. <clears throat> and this is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 
Some of you probably knew we were going to end up here. If you're going to talk about wisdom, you've got to go in Proverbs. You've you got to go in James, and you've got to go in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I know Jay was like, I knew, his, we, I knew we were wrapping up here. I knew we were, we were coming here. <clears throat> but it's an awesome thing. It says, now, now, now listen to this, and, and not just with, like, listen with your, your heart. Like, treasure this scripture that I'm about to read. It says this, God has united you with, G, with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. God made him to be wisdom himself. Wisdom of, of God isn't just facts and principles and all that. The wisdom of God is a person. It's, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus is Proverbs in the flesh. He lived it out. Proverbs in him and, and we're in Christ. So it's God's will that you and I, that we would be Proverbs in the flesh. That's how we fight O oppression, that's how we fight racism, that's how we pro fight taking advantage in the evil and the chaos and the anarchy and everything is that we have to be next to Jesus and in that, then we can walk in wisdom. We can be Proverbs with flesh on. I wanna tell you that you, if you're falling away from Jesus, you better uh, come back, step back to him, grab a hold of him because as we are connected with Christ then we are connected from, with the wisdom of God. So I'll review. There's a little bit of worship team, wisdom team. There's a lot of wisdom in, in these songs. It makes the darkness tremble. So we have to ask. We have to humble up and ask. Just like dad, at some point, and I'll just maybe even speak to the men in particular, humble up. Humble up. Admit that there might be something greater, some knowledge out there that comes from heaven that is bigger than you uh, yourself. Be vulnerable. God is not going to chastise you. He's not going to make you feel puny for doing it. He's just going to pour out like some awesome wisdom and awesome blessing on, on your life. Treasure it. So just like hidden treasure, go after this thing. Again, Seeking wisdom, acquiring wisdom isn't necessarily an intellectual exercise as much as it is an exercise of the heart. Track it down. I want to tell you to pursue it. And the awesome thing that we learned this morning is that at some point, wisdom is going to pursue you in return and fill you with joy. I want to tell you, there's a couple word studies I'd like you to, to do this week as you're uh, hopefully in, in Proverbs, and that is to do a word study. Every time the word joy or every time the word peace occurs in the Proverbs, there's online software. You can do it really, really easy and look at the great connection that there is between wisdom and joy and wisdom and health and wisdom in hope and wisdom in all of these things. And the, fast, the last thing is to tear up, to cry out. Wisdom is not gained by casual prayer. Get to a place before the Lord where you are, are crying out. And sometimes at church, I'm really happy when we pray and I want to teach everybody. And I like when you guys teach me about the value of prayer. But we are not just here to tell, teach people how to pray. We are here to teach people how to cry out. This place that we're in as a nation, as, as a world, as, as a church, I want to tell you the only way that it is broken, I'm talking about prayer next week, but the only way that it is broken is when two or three hundred people here are not here on Sundays, but when they are here on Tuesday night at the prayer meeting. There's a, a sense, and I've, I've picked up on it, that, that some are saying, well, hey, we... We tried prayer and it didn't work. I want to tell you that's the, the, the biggest deception. The only way forward in all of this is, is prayer. 
So here's the thing. I want you to simplify your devotion. I want to invite you in. And this is a super easy way to do it. Very, very doable. And that is just read a chapter of Proverbs a day. So today is the 14th. So we would read chapter 14. And so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Get in. I want to tell you, I've got my Bible open by, and I've got it open into Proverbs morning, noon, and night. God's wisdom is a straight and solid path. I was thinking of of Jesus, and you know, Jesus being sacrificed, it was considered the, the foolishness of God. It didn't make sense to any human that God would sacrifice his own son for people that, that would hate him and mock him and make false accusations and reject him and would ultimately execute him. But it said all along, if we read in Ephesians 1, it was God's good pleasure. It was always uh, the plan. It was always the, the path that he had. And at just the right time, and at just the right time, this is the wisdom of God. It's found in timing. At just the right time, he sacrificed his son for you and for me. So we are with him. He's in us moving in, in wisdom. The first step is asking. And if you want to ask for wisdom, and here's what I want to say before uh, we move into this uh, a short response time. Uh, don't stand up because everybody's uh, standing up. But let this be like a, a true ask uh, of the heart. And, and when you are ready, and this is something uh, I almost wish we weren't in a room. I, I wish everybody was by themselves, but, but here we are. We're all together. I want you to, to just to stand or, or raise your head. Actually, baby, stand and hold your arms up just like this, like you're ready to receive. And just begin asking uh, for wisdom. Start pursuing it. Start adjust it in your heart. Say, Lord, I haven't treasured it like I've treasured other things, but today I am treasuring uh, wisdom, your wisdom. 